SAT and ACT scores, national standardized tests, how much does it vary between institutions and exactly what everyone is looking for? Let's take a listen uh, in two contrasting discussions, one with Clark University and the other is um, Yale University. Clark University has an acceptance rate that's about 48% uh, who apply get accepted. Right Out of 100%, 48% get accepted. Yale, on the other hand, and these are um, numbers that vary every year, um, but Yale University has a 5.3%, according to 2021 data, as an acceptance rate. So out of 100 applicants, you're going to roughly get five that get accepted. Um, and also we have to look at um, how many people know that they have a likely chance of getting into Yale apply, right? So you also have a filter right in front when you're considering the data. So let's, let's listen to some of this um, and you'll get a feel for Clark versus Yale. What testing? Uh, Emily, what, <laughs> what's the, you want to, you want to, you want to take a whack at the boogeyman? Sure. So as I look at the history at Clark in terms of test submission, so Clark was a, an institution that was test optional well before the pandemic. So we have a number of years where we're able to look at how does testing when it exists in the file, how does that contribute to our confidence in someone's ability in our classroom? So again, I'm a big fan of people understanding that we all have to do the work to make sure that our admission processes work for our individual institution. So for Clark, it's not a highly predictive element. It could, it can contribute to a prediction, but it's not on its own something that's highly predictive of success on our campus. So we typically only see about a third of our applicant pool actually submitting testing. Mm -hmm. So when I think about our reading process, the way we train readers, the way that we actually are looking at, you know, when we're in an application, we are looking, our base assessment of their academic background really is the transcript, what's the writing ability, what's the level of learning that we're seeing. And then if there's testing, it has the potential for to reinforce what we're seeing. You know, maybe it backs up the type of um, preparation that we're seeing in the classroom. Maybe it helps give context to something. You know, maybe someone's, we're seeing lower grades in a particular subject, but then we see that that testing counters that. So we're able to sort of balance, maybe it's the mode that doesn't work for the student in that particular subject. So for us, it's we're never looking, we're, we always start with that baseline of the academic preparation is what you did over four years, right? Sort of how you got to where you are from an academic standpoint in your high school and in your high school experience. If the testing is there, it gives us an opportunity to confirm it or give us gives us a little bit more information. Um, rarely ever in our process is it gonna be something that turns us away. Okay, Jeremiah. So at Yale, we were looking into this question before the pandemic just to understand how important standardized testing was in predicting how well a student would do at Yale. And it turns out actually that the SAT or the ACT is the single best predictor of a student's academic performance at Yale. Um, and particularly the math SAT in persistence and some of our science majors. Um, this is a bit counter to the national research, which suggests that GPA is a bit more predictive than standardized testing. But at an institution at Yale, um, we find that the standardized testing is the single biggest predictor. Yeah, I would just add to you that we're studying the same thing, and that's the emerging storyline here as well. And that's... Okay, so... You can see that um, amongst the Ivy League schools, amongst the top performing schools, they are finding that the SAT and ACT are the single strongest predictor on academic performance. Um, you've heard it. And then at Clark, they have a very different view of the, of this, of the national test. So you need to know what schools are you applying to and, um, and whether or not you have a chance. Um, so if you don't consider the schools uh, early on, then, uh, then you could opt out of pre uh, preparing or even considering that mindset as early as uh, 
you know, seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade. Of course, that would be very controversial, but why not try? But actually to prepare for an exam of this level requires a, you know, and to score uh, at the top um, 1% uh, to 5%, that type of score nationally and internationally, that requires a very, very different mindset. Um, a lot of people think that, oh, let me start preparing when I'm a 10th grader because the test is going to be when I'm an 11th grader. But actually, um, that is not the case. Um, public speaking is the same way. If you want to have a certain runway and to sound a certain way uh, when you present your ideas and your thoughts, uh, that, that requires more of a runway than, oh, I got selected. Let me go and present my thoughts and my ideas uh, next year. Someone who's been doing uh, public spe uh, speaking, Toastmasters, things of that nature, is going to sound very different if they've had 10 years on that runway. So while the national exam doesn't require 10 years of preparation, it's all additive and it stacks. So when should the intensity begin if you're considering a Harvard, Stanford, Princeton, those types of schools, and in, in you heard Yale, um, Jeremiah over there, um, shares this kind of thinking. It they, they look at it very heavily. And it's not so much as a predictor of just performance, but, a, but a, of an indicator that that particular student has been preparing and looking at their academics for uh, in a very serious way um, as in a very scholarly way with great intensity. Now, I'm going to highlight the podcast out of Harvard University that I'm a guest on called uh, Calling All Explorers. To have an exploratory mindset takes time. To be an inventor takes time. Uh, you know, it's not just, oh, I want to grow up and be an inventor. To be in that inventing mindset through all the trials and tribulations, through all the failures uh, and potential successes, requires that runway. Same thing for if you're playing an instrument and you, you're not playing it to check a box, but you're, you, 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 know, you, you view the instrument as part of your life and you want to gain that particular capability uh, so I've highlighted public speaking, I've highlighted academics, um, not just uh, looking at a test score uh, or taking a test for the test, but to become scholarly so that you could be self-sufficient and what do you do with that idea, what do you do with that capability is to continue to be scholarly. And that, that I believe many of these universities at the very top, because they can choose and everyone wants to apply to these uh, locations, um, they they do have the ability to look for uh, those um, those individuals who um, look scholarly, and what you have in high school is the ability to uh, work on your GPA, to work on your standardized test, but also to showcase your essay and and who you are and what have you done in those four years. And I would add in. Uh, what have you done starting at 7th, 8th grade in preparation for those years is absolutely quite critical, um, such that if they were to change the exam and you had more runway and mindset for that runway and pre began preparing for that type of um, approach, you would then um, view 7th and 8th grade differently than if you had no idea this was happening, never thought about having a test in your 11th grade, and so then you get sorted in this uh, system that the world uses, and it may end up affecting um, the outcome of where you attend and where you go. That doesn't mean that you end up um, uh, being a failure in life or not successful or unsuccessful. That doesn't mean anything. It just means that at the point where everybody is looking, which is at the university uh, level, first 
time at the university level, graduate school is different, um, that when everyone's competing, that that, that moment, um, these numbers come together.